Good morning, and welcome to Emmanuel United Church of Christ on this first Sunday after Christmas. Uh, we have uh, our special guest this morning, uh, uh, Ed Green, our guest organist, is with us today. Uh, there he is. <laughs> and so we are grateful that Ed is, is, is with us today. Please join me in the call to worship. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill toward all. For out of God's own being, Jesus has come to bring love and light to all people. God has entered our existence of joy and sorrow, taking on human likeness in Jesus, born of Mary. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill toward all. Our first hymn this morning is number 116. Good Christian men rejoice. Good Christian men rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Give ye heed to what we say. Jesus Christ is born today. Man and beast before him bow, and he is in the manger now. Christ is born today. Christ is born today. Good Christian men rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now ye hear of endless bliss. Jesus Christ was born for this. He hath oped the heavenly door, and man is blessed forevermore. Christ was born for this. Christ was born for this. Good Christian men rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now ye need not fear the grave. Jesus Christ was born to save. Calls you one and calls you all to gain his everlasting hall. Christ was born to save. Christ was born to save. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness as we'll use the confession as printed in the bulletin. God, you have come to us in Jesus, your true child, in whom you give us power to be your children. Yet, O oh God, we confess that we turn from your love, fearing the comfort and challenge of being your children. We are your own, yet we refuse you, clinging to the security of familiar ways rather than accept the new life you offer. We tolerate hatred, violence, and injustice in the world you loved so well that you sent the child Jesus begotten from your, very, from your own being. We trust not in ourselves, but in your great compassion. Forgive us and renew a right spirit within us that we may live as your children through the grace of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Hearken now unto the comforting assurance of the grace of God, promised in the gospel to all that repent and believe. As I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. 
God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And to as many of us, therefore, beloved sisters and brothers, as truly repent of our sins and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ with full purpose of new obedience, I announce and declare by the authority and in the name of Christ that our sins are forgiven according to his promise in the gospel through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. <clears throat> Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have poured upon us the new light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light, enkindled in our hearts, may shine forth in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning is from the book of the prophet Isaiah, the 61st chapter, verse 10, over to the 62nd chapter, verse 3. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with, garment, with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robes of righteousness." As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nation shall see your vindication, all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be, called a, you shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 148, and we will read responsively. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and forest, stormy wind fulfilling his command, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people, praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. Our next scripture reading, a brief passage from the book of Galatia, from the, Paul's letter to the church of Galatia, uh, the fourth chapter, verses four through seven. 
But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father, so you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. And finally, our, our gospel this morning is from the gospel of St. Luke, the second chapter, beginning with the 21st verse. And this is immediately after Jesus was born and after, immediately after the departure of the shepherds who had, who had come to see, who had come to see the newborn baby, the newborn king. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. When the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they, that is Mary and Joseph, brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord, Every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people, Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother, Mary, this child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of the Lord was upon him. Here end our scriptures for this morning. May God bless to our hearing the reading of God's holy word. And our next hymn is hymn number 145, Once in Royal David City. Once in royal David's city Stood a lowly cattle shed Where a mother lay a baby In a manger for a bed Mary was that mother Jesus Christ, her little child. 
Jesus came to earth from heaven, who is God and head of all, sheltered in a rustic stable, cradled in a common stall, with a poor and meek and lowly, lived on earth our Savior holy. Verse 5, we at last shall meet our Savior, found of God's redeeming grace. For that child so dear and gentle reigns within a glorious place, leading all God's children on to the hand where saints have gone. Please join me in saying what we believe in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We come now to our time of prayer. Uh, yes, here we are. We uh, want to continue to, to keep in prayer uh, Patricia Miller, Karen, John, Tim Morgan, Tracy Katz, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Gavin Berkowitz, uh, Reverend and Mrs. Whedon, Bob Hurd, Kelly and Sean White, and the Jim and Kathy White family, uh, and, uh, and my, my sister, Lisa, uh, Lisa Refford. Um, also want, uh, want to uh, pray uh, for the Crop family uh, in the passing of uh, Tom Tompkins. Also want to pray for uh, for Dee and her family and for Isaac and his family. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you that you send Jesus to meet us where we are, to meet us in complete vulnerability, to complete us to, to meet us in weakness, to experience our weakness. We give thanks that Jesus had strength to lead us from our weakness and from our vulnerability to protect us, to guide us. We give thanks for bringing us through this past week, uh, for some a week of joy, for some a week of great sadness. We pray for all who have passed from this life, especially Tom Tompkins. Eternal rest grant him, O Lord, and light perpetual shine upon him. Be with his family, friends, neighbors, community, all who knew him. We pray for all who are struggling with illness of body or mind. Uh, Patricia Miller, Karen, John, Tim Morgan, Tracy Katz, uh, Ga uh, Mr. and Mrs. Gavin Berkowitz, uh, Reverend and Mrs. Whedon, Bob Hurd, Kelly and Sean White and Jim and Kathy White and family. 
and Lisa Redford. Uh, meet them at their point of need, guide the doctors and nurses working for their healing and lay your own hand of healing on them for you are the great physician. Uh, we also give thanks once again for the ministry of, Den of Dennis Rivera uh, for, 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 the, for the beginnings of, a, uh, he, uh, for the continuation of a long time ministry of music and now for the beginnings of a ministry of the word. And so we, we give thanks for Dennis Rivera and for your call on his life. We pray for all who are going through time of transition, and so we pray for the homeless, those of our congregation, and those of our city. As, please protect them, please provide for them, guide their steps and guard their paths. We pray for the homeless that you would heal the wounds of war in their bodies, minds, and spirits. We pray for, uh, we pray for victims of domestic violence and of child abuse. Please be with Dee and please be with her children. Um, we also pray that you would be with Isaac and with his family uh, here and, and, and in Liberia. We pray for our sisters Millie and Dorothy and Nancy. And now, Lord, we lift up those prayers, not named on our lips, but known to you in our hearts. May we pray in silence. We pray your guidance over those in authority, over our country, our commonwealth, and our city. And we pray for peace, peace in this war-torn world, in this deeply divided country. We pray for peace in Philadelphia. We pray, pray for peace in Bridesburg. We pray for all the churches in Bridesburg, especially those of the Bridesburg Council of Churches, as we seek to share your love and meet the needs of your people. Most especially, Lord, we pray for this congregation, Emmanuel United Church of Christ. Sustain us, encourage us. Enable us to be a sign of your presence. May all that we say and do be to your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, announcements. Um, I have one announcement. I, have a birth I was given a birthday announcement before the service. Uh, so we would like to sing happy birthday to Susan Nowak. <laughs> happy birthday. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Susan, happy birthday to you, and many more. Um, we will now continue uh, with hymn number 109, Away in a Manger. Away in a manger, no crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus lay down his sweet head. The stars in the sky looked down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the hay. The cattle are lowing, the baby awakes, but little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes. I love thee, Lord Jesus, look down from the sky. And stay by my cradle till morning is nigh. Be near me, Lord Jesus, I ask thee to stay. Close by me forever and love me, I pray. Bless all the dear children in thy tender care, and fit us for heaven to live with thee there. And let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, for you are our strength and our rock and our redeemer. Amen.
In just a few days, we will begin a new year, 2021. Hallelujah, and thank God. Because 2020 brought more trials, individual and societal and even global trials in one year than we normally experience in 20 years. To quote, of all people, Lenin, there are decades when nothing happens and there are weeks when decades happen. Regardless of the source of the quote, this has been a year when seemingly decades worth of historical events have graced or disgraced our newspapers and online news feeds. While Philly city and suburban newspapers don't send me advance information on their editorials, I can predict that at least some of them will print some version of the familiar New, Day, New Year's Day cartoon of the old year, in this case 2020, as an ancient exhausted man shuffling off the stage to make room for a new year, 2021, portrayed as a bouncing baby. And for the exhausted year 2020, we could perhaps be forgiven for throwing a few rotten tomatoes at it as it heads for the exits. Not that we have any guarantee that 2021 will be better. Certainly the challenges of 2020 will follow us into the new year. But perhaps 2020, but, but perhaps hope will meet us there as well. In any case, we can pray that as God walked with us and sustained us through the year 2020, God will again meet us in 2021. Youth and age, endings and beginnings, an appropriate theme for the end of one year and the beginning of another. The month of January, which begins Friday, is named after the Greek god Janus, which had two faces, one looking back and the other forward. And so as the old year ends and another begins, we look back and look forward at the same time. Youth and age, looking back and looking forward, is also a theme of our gospel. A cartoon of today's reading from Luke's gospel might look a bit like one of those familiar New, New Year's Day cartoons, though on our Facebook page I posted an image, a uh, not very good image, of a very great and famous Rembrandt painting. Luke gives us a poignant account of a meeting between Mary, Joseph, and the baby Jesus, and two aged saints, Simeon and Anna, who, who have spent their lives in waiting for the hope this baby represents. Sort of, like the Philadelphia, sort of like Philadelphia Eagles fans waiting for a Super Bowl win. We won a national championship back in 1960, and they didn't even call it the Super Bowl back then. And then we lost year after miserable year. And then in 2018, we won the Super Bowl. Remember the crowds filling downtown Philadelphia and Jason Kelsey's famous words, we're from Philly, bleeping Philly. Nobody likes us. We don't care. And countless aged Eagles fans could now go to their graves in peace, having finally lived to see the Eagles win a Super Bowl. Today's gospel reading has a similar feel, though clearly on a, on a much more elevated spiritual level of finally experiencing something long hoped for. The events of Luke, from Luke's reading, the presentation of Jesus at the temple in Jerusalem would have taken place shortly after Jesus' birth. As noted in the opening verse of the gospel, Jesus was circumcised eight days from birth. Women who gave birth were considered ceremonially unclean for 40 days after giving birth, after which ritual was done and a sacrifice offered to restore their status of being ceremonially clean. Also, the firstborn male child was considered holy to the Lord, and so there was a ceremony of dedicating the firstborn to God. Mary and Joseph came to the temple to offer their sacrifice. Since they were a poor family, the sacrifice was designated 
as two turtle doves or two young pigeons from Leviticus 5, chapter 5, and to dedicate their son to God. We're told that in Jerusalem there was an elderly man named Simeon who was righteous and devout, who looked for the consolation of Israel. He knew that Israel as it was, occupied by Rome with even its religious leadership in cahoots with Rome, wasn't as God intended it. And so he looked to God for better things to come, had spent his whole life waiting, in fact, waiting and watching for the Lord's Messiah, the one who would lead Israel to freedom. Year after year, decade after long decade, he waited and he watched. We're told that the Holy Spirit rested on him and had revealed to him that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Because the Holy Spirit rested on him, Simeon would have had an unusual ability to perceive the workings of God. And guided by the Spirit, he decided to make a visit to the temple that day. There would have been many people going in and out of the temple, and likewise any number of young couples bringing firstborn children to be dedicated. Mary and Joseph wouldn't have stuck out. They, they wouldn't have been, had halos over their heads. They would have been just one more weary, bedraggled, down-at-the-heels couple dragging their way, making their way to the temple. But somehow Simeon knew that this couple, this specific couple, Mary and Joseph, were bringing their baby, Jesus, the salvation for whom Simeon had waited all his life. So Simeon approached the couple who must have been a bit wary about this elderly stranger wanting to hold their baby. Uh, you, if you could imagine uh, walking, uh, in down, you know, walking in downtown Philadelphia and some elderly stranger walking up to you and saying, could I hold your baby? Uh, that, yeah, that, that would not be an easy conversation. So they must have been a little wary, you know, a little side-eye. You know. And then Simeon began to speak. And my goodness! All the wonderful things he said about this baby, whom he had just met. He used words like salvation, revelation, glory. But Simeon also warned that not everyone would welcome this child or his mission, that he would be seen as a troublemaker, that the child would bring about the falling and the rising of many in Israel, that by their actions the enemies of this child would reveal their evil intentions, and that the opposition to the child would be like a knife in the heart to Mary as well. An elderly prophet named Anna, we're told she was aged 84 years and a widow for most of her life, also saw the child, understood the hope it represented, and began to tell anyone who would listen about the child. Simeon and Anna looked back to the sacred writings of their people and the hopes that had been passed from generation to generation even as they looked forward to the fulfillment the baby Jesus represented to them. Simeon's whole life, Anna's whole life too, was one of waiting for the salvation they somehow knew was coming. If Simeon kept what nowadays is called a bucket list, a list of things he wanted to do before he his reward, seeing this child was at the very top of it, Perhaps it was the only thing on his bucket list. It could be said that for Luke, Simeon and Anna represented Israel at its best, faithfully present at the temple, eagerly expecting salvation from God, attuned and sensitive so as to recognize. Of course, as Simeon's words caution, not everyone will recognize or welcome. If Simeon and Anna represent Israel at its best, Herod, whom we'll meet next week, represents Israel at its worst. Where do we find ourselves in the story of Simeon and Anna and Mary and Joseph? It's a very rich story, a very rich story, a story that can trigger emotion, offering much to process and ponder. We can come at this story from a number of different angles, depending where we are on life's journey. Do you have something on your, that's on your bucket list that if you experienced it, you could go to your grave feeling content? Watching another Eagles Super Bowl win? Seeing Niagara Falls or the Grand Canyon? 
For some, perhaps, this year's conjunction of the planets Jupiter and Saturn, a closeness in the sky that happens only every few hundred years and is thought by some to have been the star seen by the wise men, was such an event, though, uh, of course, we're, we live in Philly, and Philly's overcast weather wasn't very cooperative. Or maybe it's not a, simple, a single destination or event, but the accomplishment of some good we want to see in the world. Personal. Seeing our children through to adulthood, perhaps watching our grandchildren in their early years and feeling confident that they have a good start in life. Or maybe it's a goal beyond ourselves, some way to serve God by serving those in need. Those who work for racial, social, and economic justice in this country and worldwide endure times of waiting like that of Simeon and Anna. Endure times of waiting like that of Simeon and Anna, holding fiercely on to dreams whose fulfillment is deferred for years, decades, centuries even. In such work, rarely do things come together in one magical moment of completion as the hopes of Simeon and Anna did. Instead, the work involves asks and demands which are, led, which are met by a, lot, by a number of equally stubborn refusals that eventually result, perhaps, in that represents real progress, real improvement, yet leaves many larger dreams still deferred. These struggles for justice also tend to lead to the falling and rising of many and are signs that are opposed, revealing the thoughts of many for good or ill. And yet, somehow, hope not only remains but is passion. Beyond the day-to-day -day routine, is there some life goal that keeps you going? Or another way to find ourselves in the story, particularly for further along in life's journey, ways in which, like Simeon and Anna, we can recognize God doing some new thing in the midst of familiar surroundings and bless and guide those who are perhaps just starting out in life or who are beginning some new work for justice. What guidance can we offer? What assistance can we give? How can we, who have many of life's ups and downs, to those who have yet to experience some of these rites of passage, how can we who have endured pain and waiting for change encourage those who haven't? In a way, I feel like our congregation has been like Simeon and Anna, meeting and worshiping faithfully from week to week, for years and decades on end, even with our small numbers, waiting, waiting patiently, with a sense that God is not done with us, that God could still use us to bless our neighbors. And now, over the years, some younger and some not-so-younger members, some new ministries have started, though the pandemic has curtailed many of them. Our online services have expanded our reach far beyond what accomplished in recent years. And some of our families are like Mary and Joseph, raising small children, feeling stretched to the limit sometimes, especially, especially during this difficult year. This church could be a resource. We're not a wealthy congregation in financial terms, far from it. But our longtime members have a wealth of life experience. Experience navigating the ups and downs of family life. Experience raising children, work experience. Experience with illness and recovery. All kinds of life experience. Not everyone will have the answers to all of life's questions. But most of us will be able to share our experience and often of knowing who to ask any given question. And if, our, if the pandemic has taught us anything, our church's availability as a resource doesn't just have to be on Sunday mornings and certainly isn't just here on Fillmore Street. Many of Emmanuel's best blessings can be found beyond Sunday and beyond Fillmore Street as well in conversation with our members. Remember that Mary and Joseph expected to be blessed by the appointed priestly personnel, but their greatest blessing came from, you know, they, they, they were not the priests on duty that day. They, just, they were just faithful, faithful worshipers who were sensitive to the working and, and, and were there that, and were present that day. And that's how many of our, that's how many of our blessings come, and that's how many of us can pass on our blessings, just by being there. Just by, and just by being sensitive to, to God's leading and in our midst. Most of us have phones, and many of us are reachable by text and, and message and email and Facebook as well. Stay connected. 
especially in this time of pandemic and distancing, stay connected by any means possible. As 2020 ends and 2021 begins, we can take stock of this past year, give thanks, learn from its mistakes. Like Simeon and Anna, like Mary and Joseph, may our eyes and our spirits be open to encountering God's grace, even in unexpected people and unlikely places. May God bless us in the year ahead, and may God use us to bless others as well. Please join me in pray, praying in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Praise God from whom all... Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Go forth from this place to love and serve the Lord. Go forth from your homes. Go forth from the spiritual sanctuary. Go forth into the coming week to love and serve the Lord. From this sanctuary of the Spirit, go forth from your homes. Go forth into the coming week in peace to love and serve all to whom God has called us in service. Go forth knowing that God's promises and God's presence go with us. And as we go forth, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with us and go with us, each one, now and evermore. Amen. Amen. Final hymn, number 120. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let us let every heart prepare him room and heaven and nature sing and heaven and nature sing and heaven and heaven and nature sing joy to the earth the savior reigns in this while fields and Floods, rocks, hills, and plains. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat, repeat the sounding joy. He rules the world with and grace. Nations prove the glory of his righteousness and wonders of his love wonders of his love and wonders wonders love
Amen.